Welcome back, everyone, to our prayer journey with Mike Totes as we continue stepping through the book of Mark one verse at a time. Today, we're going to pick up in chapter one. We're going to go verse 35 to 45. And I just want to pick up from where we left off the last time. And that was that Jesus had gone to Peter's house and then the whole town comes there and people are getting healed and uh, God's just working mightily amongst them. And they were probably working till late at night, probably to 10, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night. Jesus was healing people and taking care of them. I don't know about you, but being around people in, in a party atmosphere and a healing atmosphere and a working atmosphere like that is a lot of work. I was more tired doing that kind of stuff when I traveled in Taiwan and visited people than I did when I unloaded trucks for, uh, for Walmart years later. It, it's a different kind of tired, but you've got to be exhausted. But I could imagine how the people went to sleep that night, except for Jesus, maybe. But Peter, when he, he was probably couldn't sleep, he was so excited. So it was Simon and, and James and John. Oh, and the wife hit Peter's wife. And what about his mother-in-law? She is the chief servant in that house because she's the elder woman. What a blessing. I She probably couldn't sleep because she's going to say, I'm going to get up Sunday morning. I am going to go out and tell everybody Jesus was in my house and he healed people. He's in my my, my son-in-law's you know, house and, and he healed people. What a blessing. But what does Jesus do first thing in the morning? So in verse 35, And in the morning, rising up a great while before the day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Jesus got the minimum amount of rest. And you got to remember, he is a human being. He's in the flesh. He feels tired. He feels worn. But what does he do? He gets up early and he goes out and prays. Before morning, before the sun rises, he's out praying. And verse 36, And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. So now, you know, Peter is, is, is they're, they're concerned about the temporal. Jesus is concerned about getting his daily instructions from his father. He goes before his father and prays to start his day. What a good way to start a day. And so what does he say, Jesus, in verse 30, uh, 38? And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, and I may preach there also. For therefore I came forth. So Jesus, after checking with God the Father, says, We got to go on to some other towns. And they preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. The ministry is on the move. Jesus is now marching through. And Peter and his disciples, the fishes of men, are coming with him to lay the nets and capture the hearts of men. And we'll see as we go on what's going to happen next. All right, there's going to be a leper. And there came, in verse 40, a leper to him beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou wilt make me clean. Notice here, the man bows before him, and Jesus does not reject him. You know, if you go through the Bible, you'll see that when the apostles bow down before somebody that was an angel and not God, they would tell him, don't bow down to me. You know, uh, you know, I'm a servant also. Don't, you know, don't bow down to me. But this leper bows down before Jesus and Jesus does not tell him uh, not to bow down. Let's see what happens next in verse 41. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. You know, this is what the whole Bible is about. If you're sitting out here listening to this and you're not saved, Jesus says, I'll touch you and I'll make you clean. All you have to do is recognize that you need a physician, a spiritual one, and lift, and I will touch you and you will be healed. And as soon as he had spoken immediately, the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. And he straightway charged him forthwith and sent him away. 
Now, we're going to see there's a difference between demons and people. You know, uh, demons, when he told them, don't do something, they didn't do it. But when Jesus tells a human being, and I think this may be one of the reasons God really somehow loves us, is because when he does something great in our lives, we can't keep it quiet. And we go on here in the next verse 44, and he said unto him, um, say, say that nothing unto any man, but go thy way and show thyself to the priests and offer the cleansing for those things which Moses commanded for as a testimony unto them. But when he went out and began to publish it much and to blaze aboard the matter, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in the desert places, and they came out to him from every quarter. You know, when you get saved and you realize God's doing a work in you, oh my goodness, you can't hold back. You don't know what to say. I told you for 20 years I witnessed and got nowhere. And boy, did I say some foolish things trying to tell people about Jesus. And they're thinking, Mike is crazy. But man, no, Mike got his life turned upside down or right side up. And I hope that happens to you too. Now, you know, we could blame this man for going out and saying stuff. But, you know, I thought about this and I put this in my notes one time when I read this a long time ago. You know, Jesus tells us to go out and tell everybody about, about him and nobody does. <laughs> This man, he tells him, don't go out and tell everybody. And he goes out and tells everybody. That's what we should be doing. Because we hold in our hands everlasting life. We have to tell other people about it. That Jesus came and died for us. And, you know, this is Resurrection Sunday. Jesus rose from the dead. He died and rose from the dead even for those who will not trust him. Now is your opportunity all you have to do is to recognize that you're a sinner and say, Jesus, I can't do this anymore. That's what I did. I messed up everything. Take me. And he did. So until next time, may Jesus increase as we decrease.